So we have a lot of new details and just simply put is, is answers to a lot of common questions that I really, really want to clarify that I kind of still see happening all around, whether it's about things such as about people that are now currently looking at their account and they still see a balance of some kind. Some people were wondering about backdates and really just sharing and clarifying all of that kind of stuff in today's update. So, hey everyone, how's it going today? And welcome back to another third stimulus check unemployment benefits extension update. The big thing that's going on right now is, is that while it is true that unemployment has sadly officially ended, there are still select people that are of course still continuing onto some kind of programs. And there's a lot of people I do know is, is that where they were kind of in a situation where even though it ended, they ended up having some kind of pause or delay or just something that went up about their unemployment situation dating probably all the way back, possibly even for a year now from when they started unemployment that I really just want to clarify. So we're going to go through and also a couple of details that just came out, of course. So we're going to go through all of those details, but as always, maybe real fast, we're going to jump right to it. But before we begin, remember to smash the like button in light of helping to support. It's always greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for similar videos like this. And as always, feel free to comment any questions, thoughts about honestly just anything, especially because we do at the end of the day collect a lot of these questions to kind of gauge what people are still looking to kind of find information about. So with that being said, let's get this video started. So to start with is when it comes to the unemployment benefits extension program. Oh, and I'll probably also put timestamps inside of the description. So if you'd like to kind of just jump around, feel free to kind of just go to whichever section you're interested in learning about. Now, with that being said is I do think it's probably insightful to watch through the entire thing because every single part that we're going to be talking about are basically about different programs or ways or strategies or things that you can potentially do to simply put us to put more extra extra money inside of your pocket, especially since sadly, as we know, is as 9 million people just fell off of the program in its entirety. So hopefully I think one of these ways can hopefully try to help and clarify details. So the first thing that I really want to talk about is that there were a lot of people that are currently looking inside of their unemployment account and still seeing some kind of balance amount. So they kind of were wondering about whether that means that they can still continue their unemployment program or what that currently means. So the story is that if you are looking inside of your unemployment account and you still see some kind of of details or something that reflects or looks as if that you still have more time to be able to collect unemployment. This could be maybe, for example, it says that you have a certain dollar amount left or you happen to have a certain number of weeks left. Um, then the answer to that question about whether or not you can continue is that it actually depends a lot on your specific unemployment program. Because as we kind of mentioned is that there really are just two paths of unemployment. There is traditional and then there is PUA. But within in traditional unemployment, there are different variations of the traditional depending on what part of the tradition that or part of the traditional unemployment program that you currently stand. So what it really comes down to is maybe the fast answer to that is, is that if you see a balance inside of your account and you are someone that is on the traditional unemployment program and it has not been more than 26 weeks or the number of weeks weeks that your state is doing the initial program for, because in most states it is 26 weeks, but there are just a couple of exceptions. Um, then the idea is, is that the great news is, is that you should still be on your unemployment program. So what this really means is, is that it is correct. You can still very much continue to certify. The other group of people that can continue to certify is if you see something inside of your a portal or account that says that you are currently now have been moved on to the extended benefits. This is really technically something that's only going on in about seven states and it's going to be ending in certain of these seven states soon. Of course, we already talked all about what, what's been going on in each of these specific st um, seven states in a video that I just made, which I'll also put at the very, very end screen. So definitely check that out if you're interested. I believe the name of the video is literally just called Seven States in the thumbnail. So it'll say seven states. Uh, but the big details is that essentially if you are either on that, 
that or you're on the traditional unemployment and still in your initial phase so someone that was just on unemployment less than 26 weeks ago or just the number of weeks but it's just for most people it's 26 weeks then you should be able to still continue now if you see a balance of some kind but it has actually already been more than 26 weeks or if you happen to be on the PUA program then the hard news to take in is that it means that you have actually already officially ended the unemployment in its entirety. The reason why it probably still does show a balance is probably because those are essentially the number of weeks or the number of dollars that you had available to collect if unemployment was further extended. So for example, with the PUA program, what really went on is, is that if you currently see, for example, a balance that says five weeks, what the PUA program does is, is that it essentially added a certain number of weeks to every single person's unemployment program or the extension to how long they could be on it. But it would basically, it was essentially set to end either when all of those weeks are finished and lapsed or when Labor Day comes. So essentially, whichever comes first, which sadly, because Labor Day already happened, it means that for most people, if you were someone that was able to continue unemployment all the way through, it probably means that on that Labor Day did come first. And so that's why the bottom line is, is that it means that it is ending for those particular people. Now, if say, for example, another common question I do know is, is really about the retro payments and the back date. So for people that are on a lawsuit of some kind, all of those payments are indeed retroactive. So we just have to kind of see what happens with the lawsuits. Of course, we kind of already talked about it in the video I made just probably, I believe just yesterday. I believe it's literally called 16 states because at this time there are 16 states with lawsuits. I think the name of that video is, um, it's, just look for 16 states in the thumbnail. You'll see which one it is, and it'll be at the very, very end screen. Um, but the idea really is that even if you are in a state that is still continuing unemployment as usual, or was continuing and had unemployment go all the way until Labor Day, if you had some kind of break in claim, so this could be something, for example, and supposedly they said in a lot of news articles, this happened to actually about probably around 40% of the people that that were on unemployment at some point in time. So if you ended up going through some kind of delay at any phase of the time that you were on unemployment, this could be anything, for example, say for example, your account was frozen for some reason, or you went through a delay, or you came from a state, maybe they, they, they just flagged or just something, essentially if something happened where you had some kind of break where you were not able to smoothly continue on to the unemployment, like the other majority, which is basically about 60%, so still a lot of people on both ends of the um of of the situation uh then the idea is, is that yes you can actually still very much receive your retro and back payments if you are someone that either went through a delay you went through a gap something ended up happening with your situation you maybe had to take care of an id me so you maybe had to identify stuff or confirm stuff any of those reasons another popular reason is say for example maybe you filed unemployment but it took you longer than you originally thought to actually be able to get approved and start the program. So say for example, maybe you happen to lose your job in March of 2020, but you didn't get approved for unemployment until April of 2020, and they never gave you the back dates from when you actually physically ended unemployment. You might have about two to three weeks where they never fully paid you for unemployment because you started a little bit later. Those dates, there is a chance that you can potentially get backdated for those dates as well. The big thing really is that you, while it is true that you would be able to physically qualify for it, you may struggle a little bit with being able to logistically actually get it. So you have the right to do it, but you may have physical difficulties to actually physically be able to do it. Now, if you are looking to try to get any information or try to get any of those backdate payments, then the big thing really in order to do that is that you're probably going to have to try to 
look in to calling the unemployment offices because everything related to that is probably a specific account situation. So it is something that they're going to have to do it on their side in order to kind of, kind of correct and approve it. And I do know is that when it comes to calling unemployment, how easy or smooth or difficult it is probably depends a lot more on the state that you're currently in. The big advice that I've kind of been sharing with a lot of people is that if you're trying to keep in touch with unemployment, most states, there are more than one phone numbers that you can use depending on the situation to reach unemployment. Sometimes there are some states that maybe have five different phone numbers, one for every single language, one for every single department within unemployment or different situation. The big thing is that if you're trying to contact them, probably the biggest advice is to try to compile all of the different numbers. Um, consider trying to rotate the numbers, but also consider trying to just call them at very scattered times of day, simply because a lot of times the offices can vary very much in busyness depending on when you physically call them. Many, many people say around like when they first open up is, you know, a pretty reasonable time. Some recommend lunch. Um, I do know is that if you try to call them the one hour to closing, it may be a little bit difficult because I do know is that that's normally typically the time when everyone tries to procrastinate and try to get their phone call in before the actual number finishes or before the actual office is closed, but it is just a general idea is really to just diversify. But beyond this really is that if you are looking for any kind of financial assistance in general, then probably the best bet now that unemployment has sadly ended and you if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend trying to see what other government support services your state potentially offers. I do know is that many of the states or pretty much every single state still has some kind of pandemic EBT food stamps. So definitely consider um, trying to get onto that because they are doing a boost of some kind. So you can potentially be getting several hundred dollars to pay for food every single month, which is potentially going to be a massive, massive lifesaver. Um, there are many states that just opened up applications for rental assistance. So even though this was technically approved in the third stimulus package about six months ago, many states actually took several months to actually physically start the program. And some of them actually just started. So because of that reason, definitely look into things like rental assistance, um, eviction bans or anything basically around that. Of course, there are also back to work bonuses. That one is a lot more state specific. I did already talk about that once again in a past video. I believe it's literally called Approved $2,000. I'll put it at the end screen because it physically just talks about the different programs in certain states that are doing that. And one, a couple of the states or one of the states certainly, um, the maximum amount you can get is $2,000. But beyond that is, is I also highly just recommend trying to see what kind of programs are available by exploring your specific states government website, try to see if there are like charities, nonprofits, any kind of relief service that's around, and hopefully you'll be able to find some kind of support to be able to get through, especially if you particularly need it at this time. But the overall idea really to share is, is that essentially is that there are still ways that if you're owed unemployment from the back dates, or if you don't know if you're owed unemployment because of certain delays or things that happened, is that there, there are definitely things that you should potentially or can hopefully be able to look into to maybe still get some payments or try to really just maximize and squeeze out every last dollar you can, especially again during a time when there are still millions and millions of people in need, especially with 9 million people again. So Keep in mind is that if you are going through something, this is something that's happening with millions of people. So we really are kind of just in this together in some way, shape, or form. But essentially, that's what I really just wanted to share in today's update. So if you guys found that insightful, maybe consider smashing the like button, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. And as always, feel free to comment any questions, thoughts, or information about really just anything. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching this on release date, happy Friday, have a great weekend, and hope to see you guys next time. Thank you guys again.